<coughs> Good morning YouTube and welcome back to my channel. This video will be the grand premiere of what I like to call the Dust Collection Chronicles. Because my old one has officially kicked the bucket. Throughout this video series we are going to cut, bend, weld and even dance a little as we construct a cyclone that could put the Avengers gadgets to shame. Before we jump right into the DIY magic, let's pay our respects to the DLE department. My old Weezy and now officially defunct dust collector. May it rest in pieces. Before we jump into the metalwork, let me walk you through the first step. To kick things off, I needed a solid foundation for my cyclone, so I decided to build a wooden frame for the lower funnel and also a frame for the upper cylinder later in the video. This fixture allowed me to cut a precise circle from the board with an angle at the edge. I secured the jig with some clamps, afterwards I marked a circle on a wooden board and placed the board onto the jig, which had an 11.5 degree angle to the saw blade. Then I started cutting towards the edge of the marked circle. After I made the initial cut, I drilled a hole in the center of the circle. This hole served as a pivot point, preventing the board from slipping. With a simple drill through, the board was securely in place. Now it was just a matter of rotating the board around the hole, allowing me to cut a perfect circle. I repeated this process twice, creating both a larger and a smaller circle. After that, with the precision of a carpenter, Jigsaw gracefully cut smaller circles within the larger ones. I attached several wooden slats to the smaller circle, which were screwed to the larger circle on the other side. The result was a wooden funnel. Then I cut a 1mm thick steel sheet carefully to size and clamped it onto the wooden structure. This steel sheet serves as an outer shell for the cyclone's chamber. Bending the steel sheet to conform the curvature of the wooden funnel pulls the brutal challenge. However, this step is crucial for achieving the desired aerodynamic efficiency and structural integrity. You know what else is brutal? Producing videos alongside a full-time job. So covered in steel dust, I came with a request to you guys. I would really appreciate if you hit the subscribe button to help me reach my personal goal of 1k subscribers. Ok, back to the project. I aim to align my design with principles grounded in optimal dust separation performance. So I have used the research results of Bill Pants as inspiration and support. You can find everything you need to know about cyclones and dust separation systems on his website. I will add a link on his website in the video description. Before I transferred all the measurements from Bill's website directly onto the metal sheet, I drew the whole thing on wrapping paper. Then I cut it out and glued it together to see if I needed to make any changes to the size. And yep, I had to make the cylinder a little smaller. Unfortunately, my cameraman lost the video footage. Kidding, I don't have a cameraman. <laughs> now after clamping the metal sheet onto the wooden framework, the next chapter in our cyclone saga unfolded. The attempt to weld. Spoiler alert! At this point in the video, I had absolutely no clue what I was doing. My welds? Well, let's just say they didn't exactly hold up. The frustration level was very high. Considering the time investing in bending and especially clamping the metal sheet against the wooden frame. Nonetheless, the metal sheet had a decent pre-bend, allowing me to finesse the remaining contours with a pair of pliers. The last few millimeters were pulled together with a tensioning strap. The next attempts at welding, however against all odds, they held. 
but appearances can be deceiving and these worlds were far from a work of art and there was a simply reason why my worlds looked like shit. I will reveal the secret later in the video. Gratefully you can quickly and easily grind any ugly weld to a nice surface with an angle grinder. In the next phase of our cyclone design we turn our attention to the use of steel rings. These rings play a crucial role in reinforcing both the top and the bottom outlets of the cyclone funnel and provide structural robustness. I cut the rings out of a 5mm thick sheet of steel. The steel sheet I just found lying around at home. I think it used to be a kind of a gully cover or so. Anyway, my first approach was to use a jigsaw. However, it quickly became apparent that I had no chance of sawing this thick metal sheet with this tool. So the angle grinder was used, which was also only less than ideal for this task. In the end, I used both the jigsaw and the angle grinder. Striking a balance between the jigsaw and the angle grinder became the modus operandi. Then it was time to combine four sections of the circle through welding. This foundational step sets the groundwork for the primary structure of our cyclone. The welded ring was clamped to the designated opening of the funnel. This stage demands patience as achieving the perfect alignment is crucial. Once aligned the ring was securely welded in place. Repeating the previous procedure I applied the same method to affix the small ring to, it, to its corresponding funnel opening. In the next small intermediate step I prepared the ring for the upper part of the cyclone. I also cut out the final parts for our cyclone from the rest of the 1mm thick metal sheet. Then I turned my attention to the lower cyclone outlet. The metal was carefully bent until the desired curvature was achieved. Once I was happy with the curvature, the short bent tube was welded together. In a further step another small circle was carefully cut out of the 5mm thick metal sheet and was welded to the lower outlet, which contributes to the functional completeness of the design. And so the lower part of the cyclone was finished. Now we are about to unfold the next chapter in our cyclone journey. With the help of another wooden frame and clamps, the sheet metal embraced its curves and slowly transformed into a cylindrical structure. Afterwards it was time for my welding machine again. I started to spot weld the ends, so that the cylinder would stay in shape without being clamped. Then I used the tensioning strap for the remaining weld seams. Then I dismantled the inner wooden body by losing the screws with my cordless screwdriver. Afterwards, I welded the second larger circle to the lower side of the cylinder. Now the angle grinder takes the spotlight. With it, I sanded down the weld seams a little. On to the next act, where metal sheets transformed into a square pipe. By bending and welding, I crafted a V-tail piece in my cyclonic parcel. Despite my best efforts, the weld stubbornly resists perfection. Anyway, we are getting closer to the point where I will get the aha moment, where my welds go from total shit to unbelievable. With my square tube in hand, it was time to connect the next two parts. 
I carefully positioned them at the exit at the cylinder. Once satisfied with the position, the welding torch ignites once again. Now onto the inner spiral. First things first, I began by cutting several fins from cardboard. The initial idea was to make them oversized, allowing room for adjustments later. To secure the fins inside the cylinder, I opted for a simple yet effective solution, adhesive tape. I carefully attached the fins one by one on the inner surface, making sure they were well placed until I was satisfied. After the cardboard spiral prototype was ready, I transferred the measurements of the cardboard fins onto a metal sheet. Using a trusty angle grinder, I cut the metal sheet into the desired fin shapes. Then it was time to weld them into the inner part of the cylinder. With the inner fins securely in place, it was time to address the interior of the cylinder. Knowing that the access would become challenging once the top was welded shut, I began by applying a coat of metal primer to the inner surface. Now let's move on to crafting the lid. I started by welding a short pipe onto the top of the cylinder, creating the foundation for the inlet of the motor blower. However, my initial attempt at cutting a corner for the square pipe didn't go as planned. I realized I had cut the wrong side. No! God, please, no! 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 To rectify the mistake, I welded the cut piece back on and then cut off the correct side. Fortunately, there are tools like the angle grinder. Because with it I was able to grind down the weld seams and nobody will ever know that I messed up here. With the lid almost perfected, I began the process of welding it onto the top of the cylinder. Following the completion of the lid, I turned my attention to the remaining parts of the cyclone. To ensure a consistent finish, I applied a coat of metal primer to the entire structure, preparing it for the next steps in our project. In order to be able to mount a pipe on the square tube, a connection option was still missing. I therefore decided to weld on a flange. During this phase of the project, I made a crucial discovery about my welding techniques. It turned out that the selected polarity on my welding machine was wrong. A rookie mistake, but one with significant consequences. Additionally, I had been using the wrong welding wire, a flux core wire, which doesn't require shielded gas. Correcting these two errors improved the quality of my welds, making them much more presentable. Mistakes are part of the learning process and it's important to adapt and overcome. Next up I began the process of drilling 8mm holes into the 5mm circles. These holes would serve as attachment points. Using a threading tool I carefully added threads to the holes, ensuring a secure connection with bolts later on. As transition from the square tube to a round tube, I printed out a sleeve with my new 3D printer. And I have to say, I'm pretty proud of this thing, as this is my first self-made design. I initially attempted to cut threads to the flange as well, using a threading tool. No! But... No! 
The process proved challenging, as two of my threading drills broke. As a workaround, I just decided to use regular nuts instead. To seal the whole thing properly, I used additional foam rubber between the cyclone and the sleeve. I also used the foam rubber between the upper and the lower part of the cyclone. Then I was almost done. I just had to screw the upper part to the lower part. And there you have it, part 1 of the Dust Collection Chronicles. We faced some challenges, made a few mistakes, but through it all we've learned and improved. If you enjoyed this journey as much as I did, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel for more exciting projects. Share your thoughts in the comments below. Stay tuned for the next episode where we will complete the assembly. Until then, happy crafting and I'll catch you in the next video. Cheers!